Okay, so tell me a little bit about yourself and how you got involved in physical therapy. Yeah, so um, I was born physically disabled. I have, was born with spina bifida. Um, I am not sure if you're familiar with that condition, mm -hmm. but it's when the end of your spinal cord is formed properly. So I've always had PT in my life growing up, and then I'm a diehard sports fan. Uh, I've always wanted to be in sports, and then as I went through college and uh, high school and college, I kind of fell upon PT with my goals of being in sports physical therapy. Oh, that's cool. I, I'm not much of a sports fan, but that's what you and I, you and I are, are different in those aspects, but that's pretty we cool. We all got our things. Yeah, we all got our things. What are you into if it's not sports? I've always uh, wondered that. Anything non-related to sports, I guess. <laughs> that's fair. Um, that's fair. If I could move on, like, what sorts of things do you do as a physical therapist? You know, what sorts of things do you work on? Uh, so I recently uh, joined a practice uh, that's in a podiatry practice. So it's all feet related. So I kind of gave up that sports aspect for this job because it appeals to like uh, they want to grow the bit, the PT side of that business. So it allows me to help grow that aspect. Um, so I, I work for a group of doctors and I'm one of their primary physical therapists at, the, at work. And then our, we're trying to, to grow that uh, department back to what it was pre-COVID levels in terms of the size and our volume, and then hopefully try to expand into bigger or different areas as well. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's cool. Um, what sorts of things do you look at when you're when you're you know sort of looking as to like whether a patient can you know be more independent and do tasks on their own? So like, what are some of the things that you look at as a physical therapist? So me personally, I'm very numbers driven. So we take measurements. Uh, well, everyone, every physical therapist takes measurements, but a lot of my decision making is based off the off those measurements. So I track them on a weekly basis. And then my background is from exercise. So I went to college for exercise science. I a strength a certified strength and conditioning specialist. I have my board specialization in sports physical therapy, which is a lot more exercise based in terms of our our board exam. So that really is my bread and butter. So, you know, I just using the right type of exercise to help motivate people in terms of getting back to their former self pre-injury or kind of using it as a springboard to live a healthier, more less or less sedentary lifestyle. Mm -hmm. Oh, that's cool. So, you know, like what sorts of tools and strategies do you use to like make people more independent and be able to like do tasks more independently you know, following off of that question? Uh, I think you just really kind of point out some of the contradictions in their thoughts. Like if someone sees a 25 pound weight, they think they see it as intimidating, but they don't realize that a fully packed grocery bag is around 30 to 40 pounds. Right. So, or if they, you know, I live in Florida, which is a lot of the elderly, you know, population. So if they have like grandchildren, they're trying to pick them up. Like that's around 15, 20 pounds. So if you're not afraid to pick up granddaughter grandchild or even like a heavy pet then you know there's no reason why a 25 pound weight should be as intimidating as it is so that's a big one and then also uh it's a fact that if people enjoy some of the activities that they're doing that they're gonna be more consistent with it so i usually kind of give them let them be in the driver's seat if you will in terms of you know if they don't like something then it's my job to find a way to find something that they will do or or kind of explain to them from an educational standpoint why it's worth doing or worth you know becoming more interested in whatever exercise we're talking about or mm -hmm. activity yeah what sorts of stakeholders do you partner with in the physical therapy realm uh so in terms of a stakeholder uh none but i am very active with the physical therapy association so i do a lot of advocacy work throughout the state um and that way i mean there's no stakeholder per, uh per se but you know that's a good way to kind of progress the field, especially when I'm trying to give other people with disabilities or even in the Indian community, much more light in that, uh, in this, uh, in our, in my profession, rather. Mm -hmm. Lastly, how can physical therapy, you know, help people, um, you know, live the best quality of life? You know, how can it sort of make a difference in people's lives, both in the Ooh. short term and long term? <laughs> yeah, I think, um, I think, when they have the structure of having to come to physical therapy two to three times a week, at least that's 
what I do in the outpatient sports world that it establishes a routine of exercise. And, you know, when you go to a gym, you may not have the direction on how to use certain, uh, where to even start in terms of uh, machines or free weights or the other types of equipment, your personal trainer may be too intimidating or quite frankly, may not be as knowledgeable as uh, they should be. So with that, uh, when they come to me, I kind of help, again, use that as a springboard to live a much more healthier lifestyle. So I kind of teach them towards their, when they're near discharge, right? And this is how you could do this at gym. This is how you could do it at home. And this is stuff that you can progress it with as a maintenance program. So hopefully that kind of uh, allows them to feel more confident to be healthier and more active. Yeah, that, that's, that's important. 